Hello again, problem solvers. This is lesson 18, which is on counting. And by counting, I mean uh, we're kind of setting up probability, ways to count lots of things in the millions and whatnot um, quickly. Combinatorics is the study of counting. Um, way back when, 6th century BC, a physician, Sashruta, um, asserts in something that I'm not going to try to pronounce, but something that he wrote that 63 combinations can be made out of six different tastes, taking one at a time, two at a time, etc. And I got through the six minus one possibilities. So that was kind of the origin of this field. Um, so we'll get to that slowly up to there. Um, so some basic combinatorics, um, soup and salad. If you want soup or salad, but not both, because you're having lunch and they don't give you both, then if you have A soups and B salads, you add them together. If you're having soup and salad, you want both, so you're having dinner, um, then you multiply. So, or means add, and means multiply. That's the key point of soup and salad. Permutation of a collection of objects is a reordering of them. So there's six different permutations of ABC. Um, so order matters here. ABC, ACB, BAC, et cetera. The number of ways of permuting n things is n factorial. So three factorial was six. That's how we got that on the last slide. If you only want to choose some things, so say you have seven letters and you want to take four of them and all the arrangements possible but you can take any four and then rearrange the four things you have um it's n factorial over n minus r factorial um so a lot of times i'll sketch this out just by starting with and i'll, I'll write this kind of in slots the thing on the left n as the first number and then you have one less choice so n minus one all the way down to that last number n minus r plus one Mississippi formula is uh, for when you have redundancies. So um, I'll get, here they're talking about a collection of balls that are indistinguishable except for color. But if you are trying to rearrange the balls, but if you switch anything on the same color, it doesn't matter. Well, first you add up all the balls on top, and then you do that factorial, but you divide all the color rearrangements. So A1 factorial is, hey, I need to divide out the rearrangements of the same color, because AI, uh, A1 is how many, um, the same color balls there are, so all the blue balls and then all the red balls and so on. And if I can rearrange those, it doesn't matter. I need to divide that out. So this comes from, uh, it's called the Mississippi formula because there's 11 letters. So you put 11 factorial on top because that's how you permute 11 objects. But there's four S's, so you divide by four factorial. There's four I's, so you divide by four factorial again. And there's two P's, so you divide by two factorial. Okay, so binomial coefficient, this is the same as the permutation formula, except I'm also dividing out the effect. I'm dividing out the order. So this is how you do, we use the word choose or combination. So this is choosing K objects from indistinct objects without replacement. So you don't put things back, but you also don't care about order anymore. So it's a little bit more than permutation, now you're dividing by K. Um, so the combinations can be done quickly for things where order doesn't matter. So for example, if you want to do five card hands, three clubs, two hearts, um, and normal deck of cards, there's 13 clubs, and I choose three of those, and I don't care about order. And then remember, soup and salad, I want both. So I multiply by, out of 13 hearts, I choose two of those, get that big number. Pascal's triangle is a way to get the binomial coefficients quickly. Um, so, uh, these are the chooses. So if you like to the line four, four choose one is four. Sorry, that four choose four, zero. Four choose zero is one. Four choose one is four. Four choose two is six. Four choose three is four. Four choose four is one. So these are the those are those common combinations. The n is on the left column, and then as you go across, it's how many different you can choose out of n for a combination. Um. Okay, so combinatorial argument is a story that describes in English how you would count. So uh, each selection of 10 winners from a group of 17 is simultaneously a selection of seven losers from a group. So that's an argument for the fact that these are actually equivalent. Uh, a common way to do that is to say, like, if you're trying to choose three things out of four items, then you don't choose the three, choose the one to leave out. Then you can see that four choose three is equal to four. It's like four choose one. Okay, you don't really need to memorize these identities. I would just reference them and have them there to look at during homework. The top left one is the most common one, which is what I just described, that 
if you want to do a, a choose or a combination on some number of elements, you could also do the other set of elements. So 17 choose 10 is the same thing as 17 choose 7 because they add up to 17. So the top left one is pretty crucial. The other ones, I do not have those memorized, and I would discourage you from memorizing those. But you might just want to look at them um, if you need them on the homework. Binomial theorem is uh, another use of combinations because that's what um, those coefficients are coming from all the ways that you can combine those powers when you do all that foiling. And there's an easy version of two at the end there. So these are, this is also why the coefficients for, for Pascal's triangle, those are the coefficients of the binomial theorem as well.